Hello. I'm in the tractor plowing, sort of. And, uh, there's the, uh, so we're just gonna shut her down here. Let's step outside. This uh, may get cut short uh, due to uh, connections, but also due to the need to get out of the driveway since I may be blocking it. But uh, there's where we are. And, uh, there's a brief tour of uh, the snow covered driveway. It's uh, very easy to slip, super slippery, so it may be a fun adventure if I uh, fall. Very slippery. Very slippery. And uh, I think I'm gonna make you a little meditation on the idea of this water falling. There's the Sunday fun sign. Uh, Holly, and there's uh, there's ducks and chickens in there. Hey, fellas, how's everybody? And uh, it's nice seeing all the snow fall off of these white pines. I may fall next, of course. But uh, the snow hasn't piled up enough yet to quite bow these boughs down to this level but quite frequently some of them are only three or four feet off the ground you know bent as they become and uh, I think I'll just do a little meditation about the water and falling here see uh, the level of the uh, snow or not I'm not sure so if that's obvious to you but maybe seven inches I don't know so I'll let you keep a little bit of the view maybe one of the things that I like is that uh, There's an inevitability to the falling of the water. You know, even if there's an updraft, or it turns into hail, and travels back up, down, up, down, up, down. Eventually, all the water will make it down to the earth. Even the water that's caught up as snow and ice in the trees uh, will find its way to the ground. There's a particular inevitability to the falling. And one of the things so nice about the snow, I find, is the hush. There's, there's a bunch of wind knocking the snow down. It fell all over me, and probably you. <laughs> but there's a hush to it. And, uh, you know, we all have an inevitable fall an inevitable failing and inevitable death but at least existentially uh, I don't know that we tend to do it quite so quietly you know perhaps in the final throes we become far less quiet but it feels like there's a lesson available to us from the snow the inevitable falling here's a bow that's uh, a a bow that's bowing uh, quite a bit. I know this one doesn't normally bow down quite like this. So that's pretty cool. It's just about sunset too, maybe another few minutes, ten minutes, I'm not sure. 
So one of the things that I'll do is uh, practice my song, which is this practice of quietly falling in the body, all the parts of the body, which we can call the body, as I did. That's the name of a set of things, the body, my body, this body, me. But similarly, we call this no, but it's a... Um, nigh on infinite number of very individual individuals that are known by the set called snow or snowfall. So uh, they're each falling, they're each on their path, and many of those paths are distinctly varied. Many of them are very much the same as everybody else. And similarly, in the body, the song is falling, sinking inevitably, quietly, we might say acceptingly. I don't get the sense that the snow is railing against its fate. It's just falling, quietly, inevitably, very much like every other snowflake. And without a doubt, unlike every other snowflake. So I should probably be wise and get back in the tractor and keep plowing. But uh, I thought I'd share that with you. And as I was walking, I was just slowly doing the song uh, on this very slippery driveway. Could feel my center of gravity become lower and uh, less slip sensation uh, in the mind and inner ear and body. So it was just a little walking meditation. Not perfect, I was talking, but I tried. So, thank you.